What is going on guys? Welcome back. In today's little video, we're going to learn how to process and handle signals using Python. So let us get right into it. All right, so there's a core Python library called Signal, which allows us to process and handle different signals in Python. And one example for such a signal would be the interrupt signal, uh, oftentimes caused by a keyboard interrupt. So control C, oftentimes when a script is running, we do control C to break out of a loop, for example. This would be a signal that we can handle and we can customize the behavior using the signal library. And there are other signals like termination, killing, stopping and stuff like that. We're going to take a look at a couple of those today. And one thing that's important to mention is this module, this library has a lot of operating system specific signals. So not all the signals that are available on Unix systems are available on Windows systems and vice versa. So today we're going to work on Linux. We're going to work on a Unix based system. To be precise, we're working in the Windows subsystem for Linux. Uh, so it's virtualized, but it's essentially the same behavior as on a native Linux installation. Uh, but we're going to use Linux specific or Unix specific signals in this video today. So this will not work on Windows for the most part. Um, so what we're going to do first here is we're going to create a new file. We're going to call this file main.py and I'm going to import the signal library, which is a core Python module. We're also going to import time and we're going to start with something very basic. We're going to say while true, we just want to print, hey, and we also want to then wait for a second and that's basically it. Now, if we have this script here, Python three main PY, it just prints hey all the time and we can just terminate it. We can just break out of it by doing control C. You can see keyboard interrupt interrupted the loop and we're out of the script. I can also put it to the background with control Z. I can open something like HTOP um, and I can just uh, kill the process. I can do F9 and do sick term. You can see the signals that I can send here on the left. I can do sick in for signal interrupt. I can do sick uh, kill to kill this. I can do sick term and all that. Uh, we can do a sick term here in this case. I'm not sure if this is going to terminate it, but I think so. Yeah, terminated. There you go. And what we can do now with this signal library is we can react to those signals in a customized way. So I can go into main.py and I can define a function, which I'm going to call def, um, then we can do interrupt handler. And the important thing is we need to pass two uh, parameters here the signum and the frame, we're not going to make use of those, but we need to have them. And what we're going to do now is we're going to say, um, basically, for example, print, you are trying to interrupt me but we're not going to do anything. So we're not going to break out of the loop. We're not going to quit or something. We're just going to print that message. So we're going to see that this overwrites the behavior and we're not going to be able to just break out of the loop using control C if we bind this uh, function to the signal. So we do signal, signal, and then signal dot sick int for signal interrupt on Linux. I think this is one that also works on Windows. Um, and then we pass just the interrupt handler. And when we do that, I can get out of this now, I can just run this Python three main py, you can see this, if I do now control C doesn't work, I cannot break out, it's just constantly printing, you're trying to interrupt me. So it doesn't work anymore, I can still do control Z, I can open HTOP and I can just kill the process with a sick kill, for example. Um, but uh, you can see that the interrupt behavior was overwritten. So we can do the same thing now with a termination. So we can just change this here to a termination handler. You're trying to, or actually here, we're going to do something that makes sense. We're going to say, okay, termination requested or something like that. And one use case would be to clean up. So oftentimes you have sockets running, you have streams running, you have certain connections running and all that. You don't want to just quit. You want to close everything properly. So what you could do is you can say print termination requested, then you can see clean up, you can say clean up, and then you can just do something. I'm not going to implement anything here now. And then we could also finally say import sys, and then just sys.exit like this. And we now bind the sick term to the termination handler. 
So I can run this again. There you go. I can now again do control C because this is no longer connected to a function. So this has the default behavior. But if I now do control Z, I open H top, I go to the process and I do F9, I do 15 for sick term, and I get out of H top and then I do foreground. So FG to put the background process again into the foreground, you can see termination requested cleanup, it then does everything and then it um, exits out of the script. That's the basic idea here. Um, another thing that we can do is we can also overwrite the behavior of control Z. So of this putting the process in the background. So <clears throat> for example, we can do something like stop handler, you cannot put me into the background. Something like this. And the signal is sick TSTP stop handler. And then we can just run this. And now if I try to do control Z, you cannot put me into the background, but I can still do control C to just interrupt. Unless of course, I do multiple functions where I have an interrupt handler, a stop handler, and I do all these, I connect all these signals to the functions, then I would not be able to interrupt to terminate or to do anything else. Now, one thing that you cannot do is you cannot overwrite kills. So you cannot decide what happens when a signal for killing the process is sent when a signal for killing is sent, the process will be killed. You cannot do something like signal 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 sick kill and then connect it to a function This is not possible. Um, because killing means killing, you cannot clean up, you cannot print messages, it's just killing the process. Um, now, Let's get to some more interesting stuff and some more useful stuff. One thing that I actually used recently in a project, I had certain algorithms that I wanted to benchmark. So I wanted to compare their runtime and they had to solve a certain problem. It was a learning, uh, it was actually a genetic algorithm or multiple genetic algorithms that I had to compare against each other. And I wanted to see, okay, um, how long does it take to get to a certain score, which is quite simple, you just do a start time and end time and you say, okay, when you reach the score, just terminate. But I also wanted to do something different. I wanted to say, um, what score do you reach after a certain time? So run for five minutes and then tell me what the score is. And this was possible with multi processing, you know, one process watching the other process. But on Linux, this is quite simple using a signal called sick alarm. So the alarm signal essentially, which uh, causes a timeout. And this is really interesting and really easy to implement. So we can just do alarm handler. And all we want to do here is we want to say that there is a variable called done, which is going to be false. Then we're going to say uh, global done, we're going to say done equals true. And we're going to just reset the alarm to zero. And the basic idea is that we're going to bind now the sick alarm. So uh, a l r m, we're going to bind this to the alarm handler. And what we want to do now is we want to say there is a time limit, how many seconds we want uh, to run this time limit, let's set this to three, we're going to say signal dot alarm time limit. And basically what happens is that it's going to count down from this amount. So this are the seconds. So three, two, one, and then it's going to send the sick alarm signal. And this will cause the function to set done to true. And if we have uh, a different loop here, if we say, let's say we have a counter equals one, and then we're going to say while not done, print counter plus one, or actually not counter plus one, let's do a calculation counter to the power of four. Um, and then we're going to say counter plus equals one. And in the end, we want to do reached counter counter like this. So this is just a trivial example. I used it for benchmarking. This is uh, quite useful when you want to see okay, let this run for five minutes and tell me what the score is. This is um, a very good way to do it if you want to have exactly five minutes. So let me see. Uh, let me let me show you how this works. Python three main py, you can see it does all the calculations and after three seconds, it stops. So I'm going to do it again, you can see my hands, I'm not doing anything. And after three seconds, it just 
stops because the alarm signal is being sent. This is a very nice thing that we can do for benchmarking. Uh, I actually use this in practice, which is uh, why I actually make this video because uh, I was fascinated on how simple this is done on Linux. Because if you want to do the same thing on Windows, if you want to say, okay, run this for five minutes and give me the result, you would have to have one process watching the other process and terminating the other process. But then you also want to get the results from the first process. So you need to transmit them <clears throat> across multiple processes with a signal. This is much simpler. So I really prefer this. So another thing that can be quite interesting, let's go back to the previous structure. Um, so let's call this now a resize handler. This is something that can be useful for games or graphical applications. Uh, I'm just going to print a message here. So window was resized. <clears throat> And we're going to connect the what was it sick w inch. We're going to connect this to the resize handler. And we're going to basically just say again, while true. Print. Hey, <clears throat> and we forgot to sleep time sleep one. And now we will be able to see if I run this and I uh, press alt and enter to get to to basically resize everything. Um, you can see that every time I do something like this, it resizes the window, you can see my desktop is not very clean. Uh, but you can see every time I resize the window, this uh, calls the event. And if you're doing some graphical stuff, if you're doing some graphical application, you can just get this event, get the signal and then uh, adjust some parameters, some some resolution or something. Now, the last thing that I want to show you is we can also have a custom event. So for example, we might have a simple program, we're going to do the following thing, we're going to call this a special handler. And then we're going to just print <coughs> special signal was received. And then we can say that this should happen when we have sick USR one. So user defined special handler. <clears throat> and the rest stays the same. And then we're going to open up a new script, we're going to call this killer py. I mean, actually, it's not necessarily killing the process, but we're going to send with a kill. Um, with a kill instruction, we're going to send a signal to the process. So we're going to say import OS import signal. And we're going to say the PID will be entered manually. And we're going to say OS kill int PID. And the signal that we want to send is signal dot sick user one, and there's also user two, which you can also use for whatever you want to use it for. Um, and what we also want to do here is want to say import OS and we want to print so that we know what the idea of the process we want to print the OS. Uh, was it PID? What was the command again? Let me just look it up. Get PID was the function. Get PID. And then I can just go ahead Python main PY Python three actually Python three main PY. Uh, so it's running, you can see it has 6290. I can put it into the background and I can now say um, Python three killer py, we're going to enter 6290. I can put it into the foreground, you can see special signal was received, and it's still running. So yeah, this is how you handle signals in Python on Linux. So that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it and hope you learned something. If so, let me know by hitting a like button and leaving a comment in the comment section down below. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell to not miss a single future video for free. Other than that, thank you much for watching. See you in the next video and bye.